Greetings. Hi. It's my birthday. It's my birthday. Yo, y'all gonna get sick of me saying it's my birthday. It's my, first of all, it's my birthday all fall until winter. Definitely gonna be my birthday all month long. I didn't even plan nothing like special for my birthday, but I'm going to, which I'll probably end up doing in November. But hi, um, welcome. I usually, mm, sometimes I like to start this show at six, but I wanted to do it an hour early today at, at five. Um, cause this is most likely going to be a two hour show. Cause I said, when I do the, my show, Dana with the data is going to be hour and a half. I came to that conclusion recently. I am going to open up the phone lines. That'll be later in the show. Hi, hot spot casino, but today is going to be a special show, right? Um, uh, I am going to have the judge hop on because he is available today and is something I want him to talk about. So let's just get into it. Is Kanye West anti-polygenic? I hope so. He is being accused of anti-Semitic remarks and Twitter and Instagram has suspended his account, right? Because of so-called anti-Semitics. Um, I don't think it was but we're going to dissect that. And people were saying, okay, well, where's your homegirl, Candace? Because you're getting all this heat, all this backlash. Candace was very quiet. Oh, but Miss Thing responded today on her podcast at four. And I want to discuss that too. Second topic, the politics of toxic Black men. My response to this non-FBA journalist from the Washington Post called Karen Atia, A-T-T-I-A-H. It was an opinion piece and she titled it Kanye West, Hershey Walker, the politics of black toxic, of the politics of toxic black men, disrespecting black men. And you are a black woman from Ghana. She put Ghana, Nigeria, and Texas, but she's a non-FBA. But there are a lot of FBA Black women who talk shit about Black men here in America. And I'm going to get into them too. And as you can see on the thumbnail, I have Tariq Nasheed and I have Puffy because I want to talk and break down about that bullshit as Revolt TV, Revolt TV Summit, the Revolt Summit of 2022. They finally released it right on YouTube so that we could see what was talked about, you know, what the people say, the different panels. It was like an hour and 30 minutes. Eight minutes was allocated to the reparations panel. And it wasn't even called the reparations panel. They titled that panel, Where's My Money or Where's the Check? But eight minutes is all we get to see. So you edit down, I don't know if the panel was an actual hour, but they edited all the way down to eight minutes. And you had Tariq Nasheed, you had Riza Islam. I believe you had Killer Mike on the panel. And the woman who played in, um, I don't know, the Queen Latifah show, I forgot her name, but you had Camilla. She's on the reparations um, committee board in California when they're getting the reparations passed. In eight minutes, I believe P. Diddy, Diddy, a.k.a. Mr. Love, is an op. And I want to bring in Tariq Nasheed. I don't think he's an op. I don't think he's an agent. Tariq Nasheed is not a leader, but he's head. He's not a leader. So why do people, i.e. like a Tara Perry and everybody else on Twitter and other social media outlets, keep having this man name in your mouth? Minus Michi X. That's the only one that I don't care if she talks shit about him. Everybody else, you're just looking for clicks and using his name. 
oh, we got to talk about the races out of the LA Council, right? Councilwoman, President Councilwoman Nori Martinez, she resigned because she was caught, um, she was being recorded, her and some other colleagues talking about the redistricting of LA. And I need to break that down because you have to understand the redistricting, redistricting, i.e. redlining, which started since the beginning of Jim Crow, were mainly done by both Republicans and Democrats, but it was mainly done by Democrats, Dixiecrats. And those same Democrats today that want to be so woke, they do the most redlining. So it was her and some other Mexican slash Latino colleagues caught on the mic being recorded in the office talking about how they're going to redistrict LA area so that they can retain some power. And one of their colleagues they was talking about has a black son and called him a black monkey in Spanish. And then they were also talking shit about the darker Mexicans too. So we got to talk about that. And some other stuff. Oh, Joe Biden said, listen, if you are a transgender woman, you have to register for the draft. So, and I am going to bring the judge in. So yeah, gerrymandering. Uh, no, it's more, yes, that's part of it, but redistricting, which is called, which is IE for Jerry. That's funny because they, when they, when they point the finger at the Republicans, they say they're gerrymandering, but they call it, the Democrats call themselves redistricting, right? It's still redlining. It's still gerrymandering. It's still, they do it within their own party. It's a con game. It's a con game. When you married to whip, oh, you whippo. Okay. Yeah. So guys, please hit the like button. Please share um, this video and, um, if you would like to donate cash that super chat, the link of the cash app is not in the description. Just do the dollar sign, Dana with the data. Um, or you just, it's easy to send a super chat if you would like to donate. And actually, let me go on before I get started, started. Let me go on YouTube and be like, hi, I'm live. I'm going to move for the hearts. Which one? I guess this one. That's too many damn hearts. What is this? I don't need no fire, honey. Oh, wait, let me see this one. Little kisses. Yes. Hi, I'm live on YouTube. Click the link. We got to talk about Kanye. Bye. No, that was boring. Wait, gotta talk about Kanye. Now, let me do it over. Hi, I'm live on YouTube. Click the link and join me. We're gonna talk about Kanye West. We got to talk about the L.A. Councilwoman. And of course, we got to talk about Joe Biden and Tariq Nasheed and P. Diddy. So click the link. Hi. All right. Let's see. Uh, copy. Hi, I'm live on YouTube. Click the link and join. We're going to talk about Kanye West. We got to talk about the L.A. Councilwoman. And of course, we got to talk about Joe Biden. Hi, Van Vernon. Oh, honey, you got the transgender flag. Yes. All right. So where the hell do I want to start? Kanye West has been on a war path. He's been airing people all the way to hell out. And I want to pull something up. Where I'm going to start at. Twitter follows Instagram in restricting Ye's account after anti-Semitic posts. Okay, so Kanye West, Instagram, and now Twitter have both restricted the account of Ye, the rapper formerly known as Kanye West. 
Twitter confirmed to NPR on Monday that the company has locked the account for violating Twitter policies. A spokesperson would not comment on how long the restrictions will be in place. Um, Meta, which owns Instagram, told NPR Sunday that it removed content that violated policies. It didn't specific, specify which posts were responsible for re restrictions. So, Ye responded to Instagram restrictions with a now deleted tweet, writing, I'm a bit sleepy tonight, but when I wake up, I'm going DEFCON 3 on Jewish people. The funny thing is I actually can't be anti-Semitic because Black people are actually Jew also. You guys have toyed with me and tried to blackball anyone who ever opposes your agenda. That's what I forgot to bring up my Instagram. because I wanted to share that with you guys. I don't see nothing wrong with his remarks being anti-Semitic, but the question is now, because now he has a backlash, you know, he's not too concerned with being restricted on Twitter or Instagram because he was barely on any of those platforms. His last tweet, up until last week, his last tweet was in 2020. So he, he doesn't need those social media platforms. However, you know, when Kanye gets on a roll and go rogue on people, the question now is, will he apologize, right? So let me just share this. So this is, this is the tweet that got him re restricted on Twitter. Now it's funny because what we're basically saying here, what we're basically saying here is you cannot use the word Jew or Jewish people, you cannot. And they're emphasizing on DEFCON 3. That doesn't mean what they're trying to make it out to be. It does not. Um, however, when we talk about Jewish people, um, when we talk about, you know, their movement, um, their reparations that they received and he, they keep receiving not only from Germany, but from France and from United States, from Israel, from everywhere in the world, because they publicize their suffering and they should, and they should, but they have a strong hold they have strong alliances amongst each other that they don't cross. When you talk about being on cold, that group, Jewish people, they are on cold and they will always be on cold. They don't always agree. You have Republican Jews, you have Democratic Jews, you have all types of Jewish people with all beliefs, Orthodox Jews. But one thing that they stand on together is reparations, the fight for their people to make sure that the Holocaust never happens again. And you have to respect that. You do. However, we have a right, Americans, citizens, or just human beings, we have a right to voice our opinion. It's nothing wrong talking about Jewish people, um, their history, the Holocaust or Hitler or whatever. But you have to learn how to have the Jewish conversation without being offensive. Now, was this offensive? Maybe. But was it anti-Semitic? Absolutely not. And then you have someone like a Michael Rappaport Wait a minute, I meant to save this. I mean, I mean, share the sound. Give me a second. What are you talking about DEFCON 1, DEFCON 2? See, see Jews, we, we know about DEFCON 3, DEFCON 4. You're not doing DEFCON anything. With the Jews, we, we know about that. DEFCON 5, 6 million, we know all about that. You working on the design for the new uh, Yeezy Jewish space lasers? You're on to Marjorie Taylor Green, Charlottesville. The Jews will not replace us. I defended you, prick, you dusty prick. You look dusty. 
that's never going to be fashionably accepted. All right, that's enough of him. So anyway, you know, um, he's getting a lot of backlash. Oh, no, we'll get to him in a minute. <sighs> Kanye West is getting a lot of backlash from that remark. What I'm saying is I hope Kanye West does not apologize. Why would you? And why should you apologize? Uh, you should not apologize because you did not say anything that was anti anybody. You were basically pushing back against whatever system, right? Is Kanye West crazy? No, he is not. People keep saying, oh, well, he's crazy. You know, he's having an episode. This man is not crazy. Um, when you call somebody crazy, that's very dismissive and it is disrespectful. He is not crazy. Kanye West is very talented. He is. He is very talented in his craft of music. That's it. <laughs> of producing, writing, mixing, creating. And I'm not going to even say he's that talented with fashion because his clothes are not fashionable they're ugly but that's my opinion am i anti kanye west because i just don't like his clothing because i voice my opinion he is very talented however he is not a leader he's not no celebrity ever is a leader and nor should they be he claimed himself to be a leader. Kanye West is not a leader of anything. If you want to lead, you lead your children. You are a leader of your children. That is your right. That's who you're supposed to be leading. You, it's not, you can't even lead your ex-wife when you were married to her. But you can lead your children, and that is it. You are not a leader of America, of Americans. Damn sure not a leader of Black people. He's not a community activist. A lot of some, not a lot, but some of his talking points, he likes to start off with the plight of Black America. Or Black people need to stop accepting this. You know, Black people this or Black people that. We need to wake up, blah, blah, blah. But you've never been a community activist. Kanye West has never done anything in Chicago when it comes to community. I believe he opened, what, an art school or something? I don't know. But with all of your billions of dollars, you know, that you talked about on Tucker Carson, when you um, you talk about, you know, um, being on a Forbes list, a list of a billionaire, your connections with Jay-Z and, and other billionaires, whether they're white, black, or whatever, with all your connections, what have you done for um, Black people here in America? for Black communities, for all those poor, stricken, disenfranchised districts in Chicago. You have done nothing. So he's he is a narcissist, but he is a celebrity. Celebrities are narcissists. Celebrities should not be talking about Black issues, especially the celebrities of today. Because your music do not reflect the times. Well, it does reflect the times because it's reflecting BS. It's reflecting nonsense. And that is what America, we love the bullshit. We love nonsense. When you look at other nations like China, their TikTok only promotes educational self-esteem. They don't promote all the silliness. No, they censor TikTok algorithms in China, but they push all the nonsense onto us because we eat it up. We love the tea. We love the gossip. We love our reality TV, all that stuff. So, yes, celebrities who are true artists, their artistry should reflect the times as far as grassroots, social justice, but it does not because they are not aware, they're not educated and they don't want to because they just want to make money and it's all about them. So it is reflecting the times of nonsense. So Kanye West is not a community activist. I have my notes here, but he is a free thinker. I have to give him that. He is a free thinker. 
whether you are, whether you like him or not, whether you agree or disagree with him, he's going to say what's on his mind. And that is why you think he is crazy. Yes, he's bipolar. Yes, he takes medication or whatever, or maybe have to you know, go into a mental facility. Well, every last one of us have some type of mental health issue, whether it's anxiety, whether you're bipolar, it does not matter. We all suffer from some type of mental um, health dysfunction or disorder. But when you call somebody crazy, that's just dismissive. So no, this man is not crazy. He knows what he's talking about, right? He knows how to get the attention. He knows how to trend. I'm pretty sure he's not going to just stay quiet for the next seven days. And if he does, boom, he's going to come out with something else. The last time he tweeted on Twitter, no, not that one, not her either, was in 2020 when he put up 2024 that he was going to be running for president. And then when he started, so that was two years ago. And then last week, he put on Twitter a hat with 2020. I'm trying to pull it up. Maybe I got too much stuff. I don't know, because I don't feel like going out. Oh no, I can use this one. Yeah, I'll just go back to her. So this is, I follow him on Twitter. October 9th, October 9th, August. November 4th, 2020, that was election night. We ain't gonna get into that, but that's when Trump won, allegedly, but then Biden won. He put, he tweeted Kanye 2024. He has not tweeted since until October 7th, which is my birthday. It's my birthday, it's my birthday. And he put it again, 2024 with the hat. Why? Because most likely he planned, he probably planned on running for presidency. And then Candace Owens will probably be his running mate, right? I.E. Angela Staten said that. And then he tweeted on the 8th, look at this, Mark. How you going to kick me off Instagram? You used to be my nigga. <laughs> he has a 30-minute documentary with him and Mark Zuckerberg and other people, you know, hanging out, chilling or whatever, rapping, singing. So this is when he got kicked off of Instagram. And then on October, oh, he retweeted October the 8th, the same day. Welcome back to Twitter, my friend, Elon Musk. Now, Elon Musk is not the owner of Twitter yet, but I wonder if he was the owner, Elon Musk, Elon Musk would he have allowed Kanye West's account to be restricted? Hmm, interesting. And this is him on the 8th when he's pu pu um, pulling up about Iran. We're hopping in that in a minute. And that was it, right? Because they took down that tweet of um, Jewish people or whatever. So thank you, Mitchu, for becoming a member. Well, you were a member for nine months. He did nothing for us up here. No, he didn't. Thank you, Van Vernon. Um, guys, please hit the like button. So his friend, Candace Owens, I do enjoy her podcast. I, 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 I would say I respect Candace Owens a lot more than I respect a lot of these so-called woke ass content creators. That's on YouTube. Because at least she, she ain't selling nothing. You know, she not. She's not talking about that sister brother sis shit. It is what it is. Now, she is backed by a machine, a more conservative Anglo-Saxon machine, Daily Wire. She just reached a million subscribers. She's been doing this content creating for a decade. And she hasn't let up. She's evolved. 
So, because people was calling her out saying, well, why are you not defending your friend? Because he's getting slaughtered in the newspapers, on Twitter, everywhere. You got Newsweek calling him an anti-Semitic, all these fake ass celebrities coming after him. Just a whole bunch of BS. They're trying to cancel Kanye West. But Kanye West, for me, cannot be canceled because he doesn't care what you think about him, right? I'm pretty sure he has his money saved somewhere where you can't touch it. Oh, and Chris Jenner made sure of that. So he kind of could talk a little bit more shit. Now, Adidas did pause on their partnership. But when their stocks start to tank, they're probably just going to redo a contract. But Candace Owens did come to his defense today on her podcast. And she asked the question, is Kanye West anti-Semitic? Of course, she said, no, I don't think he is either. Absolutely not. Um, She also compared comments that she made in 2019 when her and Charlie Kirk, I believe they were in England, um, in a room, small room full of people, wasn't a lot of people. And she said that Hitler was a nationalist or something, right? And then that did go unnoticed. But I remember watching that whole um, conference that she was at. And I said, did she just compare Hitler or use Hitler as an example? But it went unnoticed. And then somebody picked it up a couple of months later when she was in front of Congress. They tried to call her anti-Semitic and she shut them down. I am going to play the clip. So she did say just because you have an opinion does not mean you're anti anything. People do take stuff out of context. Why don't you ask what they mean by DEF CON or ask someone what they mean by this, that, or another, instead of coming to your own conclusion? Because honestly, what the media is doing right now, they're basically saying, if you say Jewish, if you say Jewish people, you're anti-Semitic. You cannot say that. You cannot say that name. You cannot. You cannot have the opinion of Jewish nothing. You cannot. That is how much power that the Jewish people have here in America and throughout the world. Now, when I do get my website up and running and I will be going live on there because it's going to be very uncensored or I will be talking about them. However, um, oh, wait a minute. Before I go back to that, let me just stick on this, right? Nick Cannon. This is why I hope Kanye does not and do not apologize for that tweet. He doesn't need Twitter. He doesn't need Instagram because he was never on it and he was still making headlines. He better not apologize. Nick Cannon apologized. Every black person that I've heard of, and I don't have time to be going looking them up, going up a list, have been made, especially black men, have been made to apologize. Nick Cannon, um, Nick at school or Nick in session that was on YouTube doing well. And he was supposed to have been an Israelite or a Hebrew, or whatever, right? With the little scarf he had on his head. And he just said, hey, Black people were the original Jews or something like that to that effect. And they shut his shit off, turned the lights out before that. No, they shut it. They shut his shit off after he apologized. Had the Jewish man come on there, check him, had him. Rolling back his comments. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, I'll take that trip to Israel. What? You weren't wrong. However, after he apologized, they took that YouTube. He took down all his YouTube shows, the Nick and Session. The one he had with Dr. Uman Johnson, the one he had with Tariq Nashi. They weren't even talking about Jewish people. <laughs> but he took all that shit down. Apologized, took it down, and they turned the lights off. And this is what sets Kanye West apart. This man has not talked about reparations. He that he didn't say he supported or don't support it. He probably don't support it because he is more on that conservative Republican train of Trump or whatever, whatever. But the one thing that would stand Kanye West apart from black celebrities, celebrities, and particularly black men, let's throw black women up in there is that he is a free thinker and he utilizes it. If you are a black man, you are not allowed to be a free thinker. He's going against that. 
And I do appreciate him for that because more black men need to start sticking up for themselves and their group. Now, just to swing back real quick, finish up with Candace Owens. This is the remark she made. And they were trying to call her anti-Semitic. Yeah, I agree. I, I actually don't have any problems at all with the word nationalism. I think that it gets, uh, the definition gets poisoned um, by elitists that actually want globalism. Globalism is what I, what I don't want. So when you think about whenever we say nationalism, the first thing people think about, in, at least in America, is Hitler. You know, he was a national socialist, but if Hitler just wanted to make Germany great and have things run well, okay, fine. The problem is, is that he wanted, he had dreams outside of Germany. He wanted to globalize. He wanted everybody to be German, everybody to be speaking German, everybody to look a different way. That's not, to me, that's not nationalism. Um, so in thinking about how we could go bad down the line, I don't really... I don't really have an issue with nationalism. I really don't. I think that it's okay. It's important to retain your, your country's identity and to make sure um, that what's happening here, which I think is incredibly worrisome in terms of the, just the, the decrease in the birth rate that we're seeing um, in the UK, is what you kind of want to avoid. So I'm not, I don't have anything problem. I have no problems with nationalism. It's globalism that I try to avoid. Um, she does have a point with that globalism versus nationalism. And that is a great conversation that I do want to have with Judge Joe Brown when we do the show on Thursday. Um, what is globalism? What is nationalism? I think a lot of people don't know and you'll be surprised how they try to make global globalism to be like a good thing, but it's actually doing more harm. Whereas nationalism is all about you making sure that your nation where you live at stays strong. Um, and this is her when they pulled her in front of, this was back in 2019 when she made those comments in the UK. And then later on that same year, she went in front of Congress and they tried to bring it up to call her anti-Semitic and she let them have it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. In congressional hearings, the minority party gets to select its own witnesses. And of all the people that Republicans could have selected, they picked Candace Owens. I don't know Miss Owens. I'm not going to characterize her. I'm going to let her own words do the talking. So I'm going to play for you the first 30 seconds of a statement she made about Adolf Hitler. I agree. I, I actually don't have any problems at all with the word nationalism. I think that it gets, uh, the definition gets poisoned um, by uh, elitists that actually want globalism. Globalism is what I, what I don't want. So when you think about whenever we say nationalism, the first thing people think about in, at least in America is Hitler, you know, he was a national socialist, but if Hitler just wanted to make Germany great and have things run well, okay, fine. The problem is, is that he wanted, he had dreams outside of Germany. He wanted to globalize. He wanted everybody to be German, everybody to be speaking German. All right. So my, uh, first question is to Ms. Hershenoff. Ms. Owens said, quote, if Hitler just wanted to make Germany great and have things run well, okay, fine. The problem is that he wanted, he had dreams outside of Germany. So when people try to legitimize Adolf Hitler, does that feed into white nationalist ideology? It does, Mr. Liu. I know that uh, Ms. Owens distanced herself from those comments later, but we expressed great concern over the original comments. Great, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Owen, uh, Ms. Owens, I'm sorry, we just started a recording. Um, would you like time to respond to that? Yes, um, I think it's pretty apparent that uh, Mr. Liu believes that black people are stupid and will not f uh, pursue the full clip in its entirety. He purposely presented an extract, an extracted witness, clip. The witness absent. will suspend for a moment. It is not proper to refer disparagingly or with, to a member of the committee. Mind you, Wait a minute. Mind you, this was under the Trump administration. This was when Trump was president in 2019. This was before COVID. And you had majority this was Democrats in the House. So. Witness may continue. Sure. Even though I was called despicable. Um, Witness may not refer to a member of the committee as stupid. I didn't refer to him as stupid. That's not what I said. That's not what I said at all. You, you didn't listen to what I said. May I continue? Wait, please. As I said, he is assuming that black people will not go pursue the full two-hour clip. 
and he purposefully extracted, he cut off and you didn't hear the question that was asked of me. He's trying to present as if I was launching a defense of Hitler in Germany when in fact the question that was asked of me was pertaining to whether or not I believed that Hitler was a, whether I, or not I believed in nationalism and that nationalism was bad. And what I responded to was that I do not believe that we should be characterizing Hitler as a nationalist. He was a homicidal, psychopathic maniac that killed his own people. A nationalist would not kill their own people. That is exactly what I was referring to in the clip, and he purposely wanted to give you a cut-up similar to what they do to Donald Trump to create a different narrative. That was unbelievably dishonest, and he did not allow me to respond to it, which is worrisome and should tell you a lot about where people are today in terms of trying to drum up narratives. By the way, I would like to also add that I work for Prager University, which is run by an Orthodox Jew, and a single Democrat showed up to the embassy opening in Jerusalem. I sat on a plane for 18 hours to make sure that I was there. I'm deeply offended by the insinuation of, of revealing that clip without the question that was asked of me. Okay. Thanks, Mrs. Owens, and I yield the remainder of my time. Thank you. And this is why, like, yeah, you have Republicans allowing her to talk to speak the truth. Listen, um, and he's just sitting there looking stupid because it's like, okay, you thought that, oh, you was doing something trying to expose her. And Miss Thing just slayed you. She read you in and out. But Candace almost had come a long way because remember her hair used to be looking a hot mess, honey. See, that when she had when she was pregnant with her first son. The babies, a lot of times when you're pregnant as a woman, that makes your hair grow full and long and healthy because she has split ends. I don't know if she just had the wrong person doing her hair. She was looking a hot mess. But now let me pull up her um her, um, her YouTube channel, honey, because she looked fabulous now. And she reached her 1 million subs. This is, I thought this was today's. Yeah, this was today's. I'm not, uh, yeah, I'm not playing all that, but look at, um, look at her now at the fresh makeup hair did. Yes, honey. She, that was, she did. That was a good come up for her. She, you know, especially having those babies, they made her extra pretty. So, yeah. So my whole point with that. is stop calling someone racist or anti-Semitic because they have an opinion. You need to distinguish between the two. He did not say anything wrong. Every group, well, there are Black people who are racist, but every person has said something that, you know, has said something negative about another group of people. Um, but Kanye didn't do that. He was critiquing. Also, in his Tucker Carton um, interview, uh, he was talking about Jared Kushner. And then I, I, I am going to get into um, Black men. Y'all need to be coming for that Black woman, the toxic, the political toxicity of, um, of, um, of Black men or whatever. Just give me a minute. Um, Kanye West on Jared Kushner. Because now they're trying to use what he said about Jared Kushner in his interview with Tucker Carlson. I'm trying to pull up that damn thing. Maybe it's this one. I don't have an opinion on that. I just want to state that as a flat statement. You know, and I had five percent with my words. I'm yeah. really big. Okay, so this is this is it. Company in order to create more relationships for themselves that are unneeded. It's like when I went to the company that they don't have to product. Uh, when her business partners are selling pieces of company that they don't have to because the company's already so successful and it's an internet-based company. So it's like they're really just selling off the company in order to create more relationships for themselves 
that are unneeded. It's like when I went to the Gap and with our release, they just 150 million. And I'm sure Jarrett still has a piece of that fund. Uh, they, uh, regardless of them putting that money in, for me to have been an owner in it and not known, just from a place as a, as a creative where Skims is so based on a lot of the Yeezy ideas, then it's based on all of the relationships in fashion, because I had to use my relationships in fashion in order to establish Kim in a way where fashionable people would say, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm down to wear Kim's line. And these VCs, they come in and they get a piece of it after the fact, and they run around and say they have ownership in it. So as I put on my Instagram, which, you know, luckily for everyone, they could just write it off that, you know, I'm crazy until they see my disposition in this interview and then it's gonna get scary. Uh, they, um, um, I said, hey Josh, what if, uh, what if I had 10% of Carly Kloss's lingerie shapewear swimsuit line and you have 5% of it and you didn't know? It's an ad. He's absolutely right. How you going to have 5% and give another man 10% and that's your... How would that make you feel? And then after talking to them and really sitting with Jared and sitting with Josh and finding out other pieces of information, I was like, wow, these guys might have really been holding Trump back yeah. and being very much a handler right then, they love to just look at me or look at Trump like we're so crazy and that they're the businessmen. So when I think about all of these things that Jared, you know, d somehow doesn't get enough credit for with his work, and what is it, his work in Israel or his work in Palestine, what, what is this? You know where he made these peace treaties? Where was that? Do you know the facts on this right here? So I'm like... I, well, I think that was between Israel and, and some of the Arab nations. I just think it was to make money. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know. Is that is that too heavy-handed to put on this platform? No, that's that's your opinion. We're not in a censorship business. Okay, thank you. You are. And I just think that that's what they're about is making money. I don't think that they have the ability to make anything on their own. I think they were born into money. And they are. For me, is a maverick and a talent and a person that's been, you know, beat, kicked lost everything, said to have lost my mind, went from pull myself up by my boot, my boots don't have straps on them, but I say pull myself up from my boots uh, to becoming a multi-billionaire that gets, uh, that gets, de you know, um, the, the, the price every year, of my, my network goes down every year. Uh, on Forbes. They just keep on slowly just taking it down every year. It's like really a weird thing. But as a person that has really built something from nothing, when I sit across the table from a Josh Kushner and he just feels so entitled to that idea, and this person has never brought anything of value other than so-called being a good venture capitalist, I have a major, I have a major issue with that. And it makes me feel like they weren't serving my boy, Trump, the way we could have. Because, you know, Trump wanted nothing but the best for this country. And it doesn't, like, Moses stuttered. I'm saying God is not always going to bring the most perfect personality. A lot of times, the most fake people, their job is talking and making people feel comfortable. Yeah. You know, and the realest people are going to make you feel uncomfortable. I love that comment. Fake people are going to make you feel comfortable. But the realest people are going to make you feel uncomfortable. Why is that? Because the realest people are going to tell you the truth. And a lot of people don't want to hear the truth. Give me a second. Let me.
Yeah, I just had to kind of start the phone line. So I'm going to drop the phone link in a minute. Remember, no voting, no blocking. If they do vote, they can't come over and gerrymander this pussy like Trina. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I'm saying. So speaking of rap, you know, but I, I love that comment that Kanye said. The fakest people are going to make you feel so comfortable and relaxed so that they can manipulate you, right? Basically. But someone, the realest people, the realest motherfucker is going to tell you the truth, which is going to make you feel uncomfortable. And that's the whole key. Why would you want to feel comfortable? You should be made to feel comfortable because as soon as you get comfortable, that's when you get stabbed in the back. That's when you get taken advantage of. Start getting uncomfortable. Start being that realest person in the room, making people feel uncomfortable by being honest and spitting the truth. They don't like that. They don't want to see a black man being a free thinker. They just don't. Now. I want to get into this. Kanye West, Hershey Walker, and the politics of toxic Black men. What in the hell is this? By Karen Atia. She's a columnist for the Washington Post. She's calling Black men toxic. She's calling Black men who are in the political arena toxic. Of course, she's calling the ones who are not Democrats, who go against the Democratic agenda toxic, like a Hershey Walker, like a Kanye West. So she says, America seems to love toxic, tragic, to love tragic, toxic Black men. And I want all you Black men out there, how about y'all write, tweet, or message the Washington Post with disagreement and discernment for this woman? Or anybody that is saying Black men is toxic, Black men is evil, or Black men is stupid, anything degrading, you need to start speaking up. She says, this week, the dusty behavior of two of them in particular provides a sad look into the way the toxic masculinity gets rewarded in this country. And I'm so sick of that word, toxic. She goes, exhibit A, Kanye West. Again, Kanye West is not a leader. He's not a politician. He's not a community activist. He's a musician. He's a producer and a rapper. He's an entertainer. But she goes on to say, I first started paying attention to Kanye West in his 2004 album, College Dropout. That was back when Kanye was one of the conscious rappers who made it to the mainstream. One of his hit songs, All Falls Down, took aim at the dangers of consumerism for Black people, along with the perils of aiming for whiteness. Are you crazy? Yo, she's bugging. He rapped. And for that paper, look how low we're stooped. Even if you in a binge, you're still a nigga in a coop. Well, Kanye West still feels the same way about that now. Change. You were never a conscious rapper. He was a music producer. I love everything about the album, that song in particular. Looking back, however, West seemed to have been foretelling his own. Tragic fall from what he once was. This is what I'm saying when it comes to particular, let's just talk about Black women. I don't like to do the ginger thing, but Got to talk about Black women who want to constantly shit on Black men. And I'm going to get into the Black men that do the same, but today let's focus on Black women. Who are you to measure or set the bar for when a Black man falls from grace or have a, you know, or, or goes off his course? Who told you you get to judge that? Who put, who put you in that authority position? Oh, a white man did it because you love your white daddies. She goes on to say, Wes has now reached the pinnacle of access to the white fashion world. 
something he bragged about publicly and pathetically. He has made it. And so what does he go and do? Surprise, fashion show for the line Yeezy. Conservative Black provocateur Candace Owens wears a shirt, White Lives Matter, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so she's saying, you know, he's reached the pinnacle of access to white fashion world. Well, what is the white fashion world, right? When you talk about these Paris fashion designers, um, Balenciaga, because this shirt was from Balenciaga, you know, this was just them two trolling. All lives, yes, do matter. Black lives, yes, they always matter and still matter. And we should make it matter, not just in the womb, but outside of the womb. But when this Black woman says access to white fashion, how many of you, my audience, you know, have you known of any Black woman not wearing white fashion labels? Don't this, and I'm pretty sure this woman in particular has some red bottoms. Christian LeBau, Louis Vuitton. Louis, and, and uh, it's not even Vuittons. It's not even Louis Vuittons. It's pronounced, I forgot how to pronounce it in French. How many white fashion labels do Black women wear on their clothes, their feet, their bags, their damn wigs? Her in particular, because she do have a weave. I'm going to show you a picture of her. Owens and West have this in common. They are Black public figures in the business of providing of shock but little substantive value, right? So they hold no value in her book. The stunts he has been increasing in West's case from his posing with President Donald Trump in a Make America Great Again hat to his pronouncing slavery was a choice. He has cyber harassed ex-wife Kim Kardashian, aimed violent and menacing messages at Kardashian's ex-boyfriend. When a black female editor at Vogue criticized his White Lives Matter shirt, West fired back, blasting her fashion choices. Mind you, and that was it, right? The magazine issued a statement. So she's calling Kanye West toxic because he supports Trump because he is no longer a quote unquote conscious rapper. This is her Twitter. The role of the artist is to make the revolution irresistible. Bitch, you are not an artist. Karen Atia, Guyanian, Nigerian, Texan, communist, communist columnist, of the Washington Post, right? And she penned this article. She is so proud of this article. You just criticized, the only thing you did, you called this man toxic because you don't agree with his fashion and his music. He wrote two gospel, he released, I think it was two gospel albums. He's probably a born again Christian. That's his business. He's a father. He's an active father. He was married. He did not have his kids out of wetlock. You don't have a problem with her marrying a white woman because you are actually here defending Kim Kardashian. So what is your problem with this black man that you want to call him toxic? And that is the problem that we're having in the black community with this gender war. But the problem is the major thing is you do have black women in these positions of media who is giving a platform by their white daddy to disrespect and disregard Black men as if they have no type of intelligence, no type of leadership. That's basically what she's trying to paint here. So then let's go into Exhibit B, Herschel Walker. The former NFL star is now running as a Republican for the U.S. Senate in Georgia. Well documented that the man says painfully dumb things that should be politically disqualifying. On climate change, he has observed that Georgia's good air could float over and replace China's bad air, which would need to be cleaned up before the air got back to Georgia. He has questioned evolution acts and why are there still apes? Think about it. Okay, so listen. Maybe Harsh Hershey Walker. Listen, he was an athlete. 
How many Democrats have said some dumb shit? So, you know, if you want to paint Hershey Walker as a dumb blonde, whatever. But take it out with him personally. And of course, we know you want a Democratic cha- um, Democratic train. So anything on the other side, you want to have disagreement with. Matter of fact, we all know that Hershey Work- Walker is going up against Raphael Warnock, the same man who was arrested at a camp, a day camp with kids in um, out in Maryland some years back. The same man when he was running for office had a domestic violence case. Yeah, I believe he was arrested for that, for beating on his ex-wife. But here you go with Herschel Walker, calling him dumb, bringing up situations he had with his ex-wife, abusing her, holding a gun on her head, denying allegations of, I guess, the abortion talking about his son, Christian Walker. We already talked about him outing his father. Well, he's a privileged brat who's in his feelings. Are any of these scandals enough to be disqualifying? They should be, but guess what, miss? They're not because every single politician has dirt on them. Majority, a whole lot of Democrats who you stomping for, Stacey Abrams, oh, her shit is hitting. Warnock, we already know he's a woman beater, allegedly. Walker campaign said it has raised more than 500000 since the abortion story. Yes. Why? Why has this man campaign still gaining support and from Trump? Because Trump says, listen, I'm not judging that man. I still support him. We all have a past. He's changed. The people of Georgia, they don't give a goddamn if he wrote out a check five or 10 years ago for a woman to have an abortion because today he is pro-choice. Today he is a born-again Christian. And the, the people in Georgia today, they are concerned about inflation. They are concerned about the grocery prices that are going up. They are concerned about how I want to feed my family six months from now, a week from now. If prices keep escalating, I can't pay my mortgage because the interest is going up. I can't pay my rent because rent is going up. Everything is going up except for my income. That's what they're concerned about. They have interviewed people saying, listen, I don't care what this man did in his past. That was his past. My concern is, can you do something in the state of Georgia to lower the prices? to balance the scales, to raise income, to lower taxes, good education, clean water. That's what the people are concerned about. She goes on to say, if I had my way, I would dismiss these two as clowns. But America just makes this impossible to ignore. The country love to inundate us with the coverage of black male figures embodying the archetype of dumb, violent, black servant eager to please the white masters. Well, bitch, you're doing that. You're pleasing the white masters with this article. You're being a servant to your white master. Black men are not stupid if they choose to be conservative. Black men are not stupid if they choose to vote for Trump or any Republican, especially if they have been a lifelong Democrat. I've written it before and I'll write it again, especially in our MAGA era. Anti-Blackness and misogyny are profitable in America, especially if you're a rich and famous man of color. So much for cancel culture, right? West will get the publicity, the outrage clicks, the a spot in the news cycle, stores will carry his designs. He will be invited to the boardrooms of the fashion world and he releases his music, blah, 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 blah. He'll still get that paper no matter how low he stoops. In Walker case, he got the MAGA activating endorsement of Trump and he's getting even more cash and support from other Republicans. But what can be done, I think it's worthwhile and necessary to reward Black men who are doing good in society with our attention, votes, and money. We can, when we can. For my part, I try not to allow West to profit off my attention. Okay, well, that's you. Now, 
she did name some black men doing the right thing. But guess who she named? Ryan Kogler. He's the one who directed Wakanda Forever. Okay, how is he doing the right thing? He's a movie director, Fruitville Station, Creed, Wakanda. He's an entertainer. He's in the entertainment industry, just like Kanye West. He's making money. His masters are white because he's being distributed by Hollywood studios that are owned by white Jewish people. She also goes on to say black men who are doing the right things. Trevor Noah, another entertainer. South African comedian, the host of The Daily Show, has announced he's stepping down from the show after seven years, taking over from Jon Stewart. He's brought his global perspective in the United States, particularly when it comes to race. He's funny. He's very objective, Noah, Trevor Noah. Trevor Noah. Well, what had he what has he done for the black community? Miss, what have you done, Karen, for the Black community? And your name is very fitting, Karen, because you are a Black Karen. The third person who she's naming as a Black man doing the right thing, Senator Raphael Warnock. This man won't even talk about reparations. We had uh, Marcel. I believe he traveled to... Georgia to ask Warnock about reparations and Warnock would not answer it. They're going to ignore me about talking about reparations. I'm going to show them better. So this is, this is Marcel for Congress. He is at Raphael Warnock, um, I guess some rally he was having, Raphael Warnock in Georgia. And he went there to ask him about reparations. Why are you afraid to talk about reparations? Senator Warnock, why are you afraid to do policies for black Americans? Savannah, Georgia is a 60% black city and black Americans are 70% of the people in poverty. Black Americans are 80% of the homeless. We own less land now than we did during the days of Jim Crow. You're an We've lost, you're, you're a racist, you're a racist, you're a racist, you're a racist. You were probably at a lynching rally. You were probably at a lynching rally when you were young. You might need to shut your mouth. Anyway, we've lost, we've had 18 million acres of land stolen. We've had 18 million acres of land stolen. Black American men right now have the highest unemployment rate. Why, what are you going to do about that, Senator Warnock? What is your plan? Can you talk to black Americans about what you plan to do about the poverty and the injustices we experience? We own less homes now than we did during Jim Crow. Am I the only person that bothers? Okay? ...with black voters because she's not talking about black policies for black Americans. I'm trying to fast forward. Americans. Sure. Thank you. Can't be quiet and respectful all the time. Specifically for us. They've done things for Asian Americans. They've done things for Native Americans. But where's the policy to deal with all the stuff we've been through? That's all I'm asking. You have to speak out. Black American issue. You see how I'm treated? You see, if I was here talking about illegal immigrants, they wouldn't be treating me like this. Whatever, man. Get the fuck away from me. You are sorry. All of y'all sorry. Y'all see how people dying, and y'all not saying nothing to this man about it. Y'all see how people dying, and you not saying a fucking thing about it. Get out of my face on your face. Get the hell away from me. I know how to walk. Look, anyway, whatever. Whatever. Call the cops. Call the cops. Call the cops. Tell them to shoot. Tell them to shoot. Call the cops and tell them to shoot. 
you are a sellout. God ain't gonna bless you because you are a sellout. You are a fucking sellout. That's too much of the S word. I love Marcel, honey. I, I had to have him back on my platform. I'm gonna reach out to him. Excuse me. But that type of energy, that is the energy black people need to have. Oh, trust me, Jewish people have that energy every single time. <laughs> every time. That's why people don't mess with them. That's why to this day, they're getting reparations on state, city, national, federal levels and international. Because they're on cold. That energy that he just had, all black Americans need to have that energy. Not sit there, but like, God bless you. I know, I know. But can you just, no. You wanted to ask that man those very important questions about Black American, about Black Americans, about Black people in the state of Georgia. Your district. Stacey Abrams is now asking Black men for the vote because she said she cannot be governor unless Black men vote for her, but they're not. They're not. Majority of the Black population, majority of Black people still vote Democrat. But when you have these red states and you are relying on Black people to vote, Black men out of the Black group of people, Black men aside from Black women and children, they are now most likely going to vote conservative. Why? Because they want to make money. So I stand with Marcel, honey, but that's the same type of energy that we need to have and we don't have, right? So when you have this woman, and I do have a picture of her, when you have this woman, a non-FBA person, Karen Atia, Atia, A-T-T-I-A-H, who is doing a disservice not just to Black people, especially to Black men, have no respect for Black men because you intentionally said the toxic politics of Black men or the politics of toxic Black men. You keep reiterating how toxic Black men are and you're using two public figures to drive your weak-ass point. That is a problem. So the white man doesn't have to do anything to us because we are already doing it to ourselves because we are allowing people like her. And it's not just so much that she's non-FBA or definitely not ADOS because I see a lot of ADOS slash FBA black women doing the same stupid shit that she's doing. And nobody is not calling them out. This is for black men to call out women like her whether she's black or white, but y'all don't do that. So I do hope Kanye West do not apologize. And he doesn't have to, he doesn't need to, but I want black men to actually start standing up and speaking out against the media when it comes to degrading your name. If that would have said, if that article read, headline read, the politics of toxic Black women, Black women will, it will be a hellstorm. You will see Black women um, with all types of pushback, trending everywhere. Take that shit down, writing the Washington Post. See, and, and I will say this about, about Black women. They're not going to tolerate a lot of shit anymore. And so my question about Black men is, why do you keep tolerating a disrespect? Oh, is your only solution is to go overseas or South America to get you a dirty foot woman? To pass, be a part of the passport game? Come on. No. Thank you, James Green, for the... Um, Super chat says, happy birthday. Guys, please hit that like button and please share this video. I want to go into the LA County person. It 
if you want to gain any type of power in this country, you have to start pushing back and speaking up and organizing. That's a fact. Let me close out some of this. This, this, this. Now, let me talk about the Latinos. <laughs> Racist remarks and leaked audio of LA council members spark outrage and disgust. So, Nuri Martinez, she is the council president, the LA City Council president. She has been caught on tape, honey, talking shit about Black people, redistricting. Let's play this. Technically speaking. So we always want to sit here and talk about, oh, you anti this, this. Clearly, I think there are a lot of Latinos slash Mexicans who are anti-Black than any, in any other group. The group was discussing a dispute between council members, current Price, Marquise Harris Dawson, who was Black, who were at odds last year over whose district will represent University of Southern California. The clip begins with Martinez recounting a conversation she allegedly had with a business person. All right, now this is the thing. The judge, Judge Joe Brown that is, I wanted him to come on for this segment. And I'm wondering if I should wait until he come on. I did drop the link if you wanna call in to talk about it. Let me bring this phone number in, this phone call, phone call. 940, hello. Hello, Ms. Dana. How? How are you? Good, how are you? Good, good, good. I just had a quick question and uh, that's pretty much, I just had a quick question. So I was wondering like, uh, you were talking about organizing. So I was wondering if at some point during the show or uh, maybe like in one of your streams, you could dissect the uh, interview that uh, Roland Martin beat at the Breakfast Club. That, that's pretty much it. The Roland Martin what? The Roland Martin interview at the Breakfast Club where he, where he was talking about organizing and Blackwood and all that kind of stuff. Oh, really this I don't know. Yes, the one, yep. When did he do this interview? I think he did that last week. I don't know when, but it was pretty interesting. So I was wondering, if you could look into it, that's very much it. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I will discuss it during my show tomorrow. Okay, all right. All right, thank, thank you. you so much. Yeah. Thank you. I love when you guys call in and you make suggestions. That was a great, I did not know he was on a breakfast club. So I will be discussing that tomorrow. Speaking of that, before I, before I go into the LA councilwoman, let me talk about the revolt summit. That bullshit. That was pure bullshit. Why? Because you had, this is, so they finally uploaded the future is now a revolt summit by AT&T. An hour and 24 minutes, right? So you got Ray J here on the whatever platform he was on. It was the, I'm, we're calling it the reparations platform, but Revolt didn't call it the reparations um, panel. They called, the, they called it, where's my check? All right. So this is Tamika Mallory. This is Tamika Mallory. She's talking about the importance of community work, which it is important. So this is at the fifth. Okay, so it's the hour and 24 minutes. At the 58 minute mark, this is the panel for the reparations. Computers is now trying to be the largest land on the United States. You know, if you want a good sense of where to find some food, follow a hungry dog, you know? And then... So this was the panel at the 58 minute mark. Literally 58 minute and then at the one hour and four minute mark, eight minutes, it was over. 
That was it. Eight minutes to talk about get your check. Well, run me my money. Who say they speak for us, but at this point, it is 2022 going into 2023. And we are still in the same position, if not a little backward Come from on. where we were when it comes to our overall progress, I call conspiracy. Yeah. And I will never trade my place with someone who has a lot of money, but no respect for my own people. That's right. Too many of us get comfortable once we get a check and we forget where we came from. That's right. And you don't want to even go back around your people because you feel like we're not even worth being around. That's right. So at this point, again, this is a nice stage, a wonderful event, but knock it off. Those who are really about this, be about it so that the enemy can say, you know what, we need to stop playing with these people That's and right. give them their real respect. Now, Rizzo Islam, what he said, that was so true because now that we're talking about, you know, Kanye West being a so-called anti-Semitic, which he is not, um, the reason why they have, the reason why you have this uproar against Kanye with his remarks about Jewish people is because they don't play games. They demand respect. They work together. They do the work. So he's basically calling out people who are being fake and phony. I'm not saying Tariq Nasheed is, but Tariq Nasheed has said he is not a leader. He is not. People still want to talk about him on these Twitter spaces. Being on Twitter spaces is not going to get you any closer to reparations. But this revolt summit, which was put together by Diddy, a.k.a. Love, was some bullshit. Diddy is an op. He's an op. He's an opportunist. Diddy is an agent. He is because he is all pro Democrat. Um, he put this together. He hired people to put this together. But what I'm saying is, how do you give a panel talking about celebrity gossip? You know, more airtime, even when you're doing the editing. And you put the reparations panel down to just eight minutes. I'm pretty sure this panel, when it was live being recorded i'm pretty sure it was at least an hour was i think it was two years ago when you had kansas owen and ti on a stage they played the whole thing now it wasn't about reparations it was about the state of black america but every time we talk about reparations we get ignored we get shut out we get called crazy we get called agents, ops, all this other stuff, fake, phony. We get little airtime except for the grassroots, us on YouTube, because this is where it started. Yvette Carnell, Honey and Tone Talks, um, American Descendants of Slavery, they, re, they reignited the reparations talk. Yes, they did. Not Tariq Nasheed, not Rizzo Islam, damn sure not Diddy. So this whole summit was just pure bullshit it was a waste of time and it was so disrespectful for you to just limit this shit down to eight minutes the greater community land is one aspect of it in respect to my brother mike the thing is we don't just want land because they'll do what they're doing in mississippi there's a bunch of people who live in a city, but then they'll taint the water. They will do certain things like they do on certain Indian reservations. They will pollute the creeks, things like that. So land is one option, but we need cash payments. And when we get the cash, we can buy whatever land we need. I'll add, as an international human rights scholar. Now, the woman that's talking now, Camila, I forgot her last name. The legal definition for what reparations is. So oh, under yeah. international law reparations comes in five forms so compensation or cash must be included because that's one of the forms of reparations under international law but there's also restitution and that accounts for stolen land stolen labor stolen property real or intellectual so that's relevant in the entertainment space in terms of the cultural contributions of African Americans right the other form of reparations under international law is rehabilitation. So that can look like free medical care from, uh, from birth to death, free education, um, free legal and trauma services. Um, then there's satisfaction, which accounts for more symbolic forms of reparations, like a formal apology, the taking down of Confederate monuments and the 
erecting of statutes that honor our ancestors, for instance, and then the last or the fifth form of reparations under international law is guarantees of non-repetition. So that gets at more structural and institutional policy change. So my personal opinion is that you cannot call a reparations package reparations unless it includes all five of those forms. When we're talking right. about America. So basically what they did, each person on that panel, you got, they edited down to one statement per person that was on that panel, which why they only put eight minutes. They edited that down to eight minutes. Where was the dialogue? What questions were asked? So anything did he do and he want to do it for black people and see black people progress? Diddy is full of shit. He gets a lot of money from corporate putting these summits together. It's a lot of exposure for a revolt TV here on YouTube. Yes, I do believe he paid for Carisha Please podcast to win the BET Hip Hop Awards. It should have went to drink um, champs or million dollar game. You know, she just came out. Right. Um, but the fact is that, listen, if you're not going to give Black people the respect and the proper platform to talk about something that is definitely old to us, don't try to make me comfortable. Going back to what Kanye West said, the phoniest people try to make you comfortable. They're going to make you feel comfortable right at home. The people who are honest, those are the ones that's going to make you uncomfortable. See, Diddy wants to make you comfortable. Uh, I'm not going to say too much about Tariq Nashi trying to make people comfortable because he pisses a lot of people off. He makes a lot of people uncomfortable. A lot. Let me do something. He makes a lot of people uncomfortable. See, Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. Particularly this woman here. Tara Perry. Every chance she gets, she gets on a platform or co-host a platform or even host a platform, always saying or doing something negative against Tariq Nasheed. She calls herself a black, blackivist, political influencer, South Central Community Unity member, fierce mother of a protector of black people, reparationist, smart, pretty, witty. I got in her ass on her space and I had to check her and let her know Tariq Nasheed is not a leader. And she kept saying, oh, why don't black people donate money to politicians? And I'm like, first of all, bitch, you cannot tell where somebody money should go to. And I broke it down to her saying that I donated to Marcel. We should all support our, even though he's not in my district, but I support him. Tariq and I, she has a big platform that gave him that exposure. So anything you got against Tariq and I, she, you got to understand he has a very large platform on YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter that allows the unseen and the unheard to be seen and heard. He gave Marcel a great starting point to have money donated to his campaign, to have a following that he's building up on now. What are you doing? You worried about what Tyreek is doing. If he's a leader, he said he's not a leader. He's not a leader. And I also said to her, the problem with black people where they went wrong. During the 2020 election, instead of focusing on Trump is a racist or getting Trump out of office, which these Black people did because I was sitting at the table with affluent Black people in the city of Newark at these conferences. These people came from all over the country, from California, Texas, New York, Georgia, 
Michigan, they came, all these black leaders, politicians, community activists came into the city of Newark during the Black World Conference. And I was part of it. And afterwards, when the Congress committee, because I was on a committee, you go in a room and they said, all right, top of the agenda. I think we're going to talk about reparations because that was part of the conference. Because you had Danny Glover. I even met um, Sir Hillary Beckles was there at the conference because he has, he created CARCOM. So when the conference was over and all the committee people, you go back and you have the post meeting. And I expected that, all right, we're going to talk about reparations, the next step, how to get it out there in the public, blah, blah, blah. First thing come out their mouth, ADOS, this ADOS group is a problem. That's when Yvette Carnell and Tone Talks, I think that was in 2018, they were started to make a lot of noise on YouTube. That's what came out their mouth, ADOS is a problem. I said, what the fuck is this? Because everyone in that room was ADOS. So how is their problem? And they said, our number one agenda is to get Trump out of office. I said, um, why? Shouldn't we be talking about reparations? And if he is the president, shouldn't we be giving him an agenda? Oh, they could. It was like, what? They was turning their heads, rolling in. They was like, what? They looked at me like I was fucking crazy. So that is why Black people are in the state that we're in today, because you got hoodwink, bamboozled to thinking you had to get Trump out of office because he's a racist and Joe Biden's going to make everything all right. No, you just selected another racist. Um, four six nine. Hi. How's it going, Dana? How are you? I'm all right. Um, you know the situation with reparations. I see that some people really aren't serious. I think we should propose specifically two things in particular. The first thing I think we should um to bring up to the attention is we should be exempt from federal income taxes. That's one. And then the second thing is, if we're serious about reparations, we should propose that anything, because we are going to go through a change eventually of uh, of uh, money, so the, the currency will change eventually. So if we're serious about it, we need to make sure that we bring up the attention that if they try to uh, get out of paying us, that any currency that is changed to, that, that, that it's liquidated to that currency and that the process of getting reparations still continue. That's a good point. <laughs> because reparations is not going to be handed over to us tomorrow or a year from now, five years, maybe a decade, right? Um, and it depends whether it's federal, state-wise may be a little bit different, right? That may come sooner than from the federal government. But you're right. Because our currency yeah. really is going to change. And you, you want to make sure Wherever this country goes, reparations is in the mix, right? Especially when it comes to the currency. Exactly. So, yeah, I think and, that's a good point. And also, and also, we should make sure that any form of new government that signs any type of thing, with, let's say that the president signs any shadow form of government that tried to change up a certain currency, uh, any federal, IRS, anything like that, we should be exempt from it. Because why pay double and triple slavery? Well, we've already done. Um, okay, so that's what I may disagree with you on that because even natives pay taxes. Um, you got to pay taxes. If you are a citizen, you got to pay taxes. This is why I am against illegal migrants coming over here because they don't pay taxes and they're getting benefits off of the taxpayers. So let me just say this to your point. If the illegal immigrants that you are giving all these social service programs to, they're not paying taxes. So we, if we should get some type of tax cut, Black America. But I'm not, I'm not that. But overall, I kind of disagree with you on the taxes. If you are a citizen, you have to pay taxes. That's in the Constitution because the purpose of you paying taxes is so that you have the right to vote, you know, home ownership. Um social security investing in that so um i don't think that we should be excluded from paying taxes whether state or federal 
But at the same time, if you want to give social services to illegals, then we need to be, we need to make sure that we are a higher priority and that we are receiving some type of restitution when it comes to taxes, maybe a tax break or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Something along that lines. But mm-hmm. I would say I disagree with you on the tax and that's fine. I, we don't always have to agree, but I get your point, mm-hmm. especially when it comes to that currency, because we're thinking about dollar bills. The currency is going to change. It may be uh, 10 years from now. The currency here is going to change. So thank you. Yeah, you know, you're welcome. All right. Thanks for calling in. All right. Honey, I wanted the judge to come on and talk about that LA council woman. 205. Hi. 205. I can't hear you, 205. Yes. Hi, Dana. How are you doing? How are you? Doing wonderful. By the way, you're looking uh, radiantly beautiful this evening. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to get my hair did tomorrow, okay, but this... thank you. Okay. Well, uh, you still look beautiful. Uh, this is Dan Varner. Uh, thank you. Uh, I was just uh, thinking about uh, the, the subject matter that you were uh, talking about um, reparations, uh, and you were at the conference of you said in New Jersey of um, affluent blacks, and uh, they said that uh, ADOS was a problem. You know, I, I, and I, as did you, I find that very Disturbing. strange that people who are actually ADOS Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so I, I also find it strange, as did you, that people who are actually uh, ADOS said that ADOS is a problem. And you mentioned there was somebody from CARICOM. That's the uh, Caribbean uh, uh, counterpart of ADOS. And they said, uh, not saying all of them feel that they, but of course they would say ADOS is a problem oh, for the most sir, part. Sir, no, no. Sir Hillary Beckles did not say that. I said he was at the conference. He was a guest at the conference. So after the conference, when the committee, the conference committee, I was part of the committee when we do our post meeting. So these are the committee organizers. And I was one of the organizers because I worked with the committee. The after the conference, so Sir Hillary Beckles was at the conference. So the conference really was about reparations. But after the conference, going back to have the post meeting, oh, ADOS is a problem. Our, our first agenda is to get Trump out of office. So you see how the priority changes? Uh-huh. And it's very important to, let me just say this part and I'm gonna let you finish up. I'm gonna let you have the last word, but it's very important to have a seat at the table locally where you live at. Because what they say to you in public, they are planning and doing something different behind closed doors. So how can you have a reparations conference? And then after the conference, your number one agenda is to get Trump out of office and say ADOS is a problem. So, but go ahead, sir, you go finish up. Yeah, uh, exactly. And uh, just a quick thing about that and I'm gonna uh, say something, another move on. Um, That is strange that someone would say, who say their agenda is reparations would say ADOS, who their agenda is reparations would say they are a problem. So that shows that, they don't practice what you preach. Like you said, they say one thing on the outwardly behind closed doors is a different story. Um, but I want to say that any candidate, like I know you said, and then a lot of people say, well, our main priority, the problem was just wanting to get Trump out of office. Okay. But here, I think uh, I think that we should have uh, ran different candidates, not just an extra independent party, but different candidates that are more pro-black and pro-reparations and push for black people to get funding, uh, reparations or, you know, funding in the form of biz- opening businesses and implement um, Dr. Claude Anderson's powernomic uh, approach of empowering black America. It's, that's, you know, as is, as is the title of his book, you know, uh, Powernomic, the National Plan to Empower Black America, we should implement a Dr. Claude Anderson model of reparations and any candidate, regardless of race, who say they want to advocate for Black people as a collective, you know, I think we could get out of the two-party loyalty system and not saying we automatically are libertarian, but we could run our own independent candidates or whether they fall within the partisan um, parties. 
they are going to have to not just be um, the Uncle Tom type or the Mammy type or to just someone who just say what the non-Black right wing want them to say or, you know, just a true conservative, like someone said before, and I think you said African Americans are, for the most part, especially from the South, conservative by nature. That doesn't mean you're a Republican, but, you know, we have conservative values. We all remember the time when they say, we used to, used to be said that, oh, black people don't do that, or that we wouldn't do that, but that has changed. So we're conservative by nature for the most part still. Um, but okay. any candidate, you know, regardless of just the normal partisan politics and just being um, the side chick of either party to just say, be glad for, you know, the little attention that either party give us. I think we should run independent candidates that's going to push for black business ownership and reparations. I know reparations, like you said, probably, you know, I have to move on to another caller, but the thing is, that's yes, we should be doing that, but the, at the same time, you have to demand that and you have to stay on top of that. But thank you so much for calling in. Right. And I just want to say, yeah, we should uh, push in the form of business ownership and, and, and loans or whatever, interest free loans. And like you said, we should push to be recognized as a special class like the Native Americans and push for tax free status. And that'll, that'll, Put us on a level, level playing field even more because reparations will be down the road a little bit. I agree, like you said. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. Bye -bye. Um, okay, one more, and then I'm just going to get into the LA conversation with that councilwoman because I do want y'all to hear that. The judge said he's coming on, he's trying to get on. Um, 202. Hey, how you doing? Can you, turn the, can you turn that down in the background? Better. Excuse me. Hello. Yeah. Can you hear me better? Yes. How would you feel? I have two questions. How would you feel about supporting any candidate that on their platform they have mass deportation? And the second question is how many people in your audience are going to the FBA rally on the fifth? Oh, thank you for thank bringing you. that up. What was the first question? Uh, what was the first question? Okay, I he hung up. So I I don't know what he's saying. The first question was, um, however, who's going to the FBA pull up? I'm not. <laughs> Unless I go, I no, I'm gonna take that trip. Bitch, if it's cold, honey, because I don't do I don't do marches and stuff like that. No, I don't. No, no, I don't. But that's a question. I can put a poll. Who's going to the FBA pull up in DC? Are you going? Let's see. FBA pull up in DC. Uh, I just dropped the poll for that. All right. Joshua Brown was going to come on because I want him to come on for the councilman commentary that I'm about to do. And he ain't here right now, but let me just go and do it. All right. Who's, yeah, who pulling up to the FBA pull up, honey, in DC, November the 5th? That is the week, no, the week before the midterms. Mm, I think that's a good strategy to do it there. I think that's a good strategy. All right, let me get into this, right? Racist remarks leaked by LA Council President Nuri Martinez. The conversation remained private for nearly a year until the leaked recording reverberated explosively Sunday and turned the focus on a sparingly metropolis towards Los Angeles City Hall. So by Sunday evening, three of Martinez council colleagues had called for her to resign. The leak had quickly became a new and centenary issue in the coming November 8 election with candidates. See, during the election season, people get dirty. Politics is dirty. 
Martinez and other Latino leaders present during the tape conversation were seemingly unaware they were being recorded. As Martinez said, a white council member <clears throat> handled this young black son as though he were an accessory and described Councilman Mike Bowen's son as a Parisi Changuito. That means like a monkey. So this is the audio. So getting back to Marquise, I told Danny, if you want to cut a deal, and if you want to, if, if you want to make like the boss moves, I would go after the airport. He goes, I know that idea. I said, tell Marquise, don't, go don't take him go, from his friend. Don't go, don't go after, leave don't him alone. Go get the airport from his little brother, mm -hmm. that little bitch bonnet. I go, I go, what is with the bonnet? What is with bonnet? I said, bonnet thinks he's black that guy don't think he's black at all he thinks he's black Scared. i told the same thing Scared. he goes why are they so close no idea and he's from massachusetts it's can't the one here that's kidding but no he's black yeah, yeah. No, he's like, he's see during black history month or have a council you know when they are it remember he looked it's like it's an it's accessory when we do the mrk parade just like we're just like when, when they used to have those statues when, in, 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 in uh, the plantations yeah, yeah. like when nori in brings the the, her little yard bag or the, 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 the louis vuitton bag yeah, 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 and this is how they talk. You talking about council members in these districts. This is how they talk about us behind and in their own behind the scenes. <laughs> For MLK, for the parade that Herb used to organize, and we need all the council who wanted to join Herb on the float, because he used to do a whole float, it would be nice. Bonnet would be like, hey, Nuri, are you going to the MLK? Well, Herb invited me, yeah, I'll go. Okay, I'm bringing whatever the kid's name is. I'm like, it's like the oddest thing. It's like black and brown on this float. And then there's this, this white guy with this little black kid who's misbehaved. Este niño has no, he's, they're not even as, yeah, no, they're not doing, the kid is bouncing off the effing walls on the floor, practically tipping it over. There's nothing you can do to control him. Parece changuito. And I'm just like, oh my God, I'm over here trying to parent this kid. I'm like, you can't do that. You heard her just then. She said, Chatico, Chanchico. That's when she called him the monkey. I said, no. And Mike is like, you know, I'm like, teaching your kid anything. It's me and Karen Bass on the floor trying to check this little kid. Me, Karen Bass, y la esposa de Marquise, Carrie. And we're all looking at each other because we're the three women on the floor. Like, who's going to This kid's going to tip us over. Because yeah. he's literally hanging on the rails. Well, you can't let him, let him off because the, the, the spectators will beat his ass. Yeah. <laughs> they're raising him like a little white kid, which I was like, this kid is a beat down. Like, let me let me take him around the corner and then I'll bring him back. Yeah. Se me entiendes? Ven para acá. It's a pinch. Something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you're the fourth one. So, anyways, mm -hmm. getting back to redistricting. Yeah. Okay, getting back to redistricting, right? So the purpose, and this is what I'm saying, she called him a little monkey because he was bouncing around on the float saying her and Karen Bass was, and I, you know what, honestly, I, I kind of get it because when you talk about black and brown, you know, especially let's just take the Bronx or, you know, um, Harlem or whatever. A lot of black and brown people live around each other, grew up around each other. And we kind of have same moral strict parenting background. They don't play that shit. And that's when she said, he's raising him like, a white kid the casual conversation they were having i understand that like i'm not knocking her so much for the casual conversations there you go however the conversations was based upon the redistricting who's in charge of what Who's going to be in control of what? We need to stay in control with the Latinos because if not, you know, they're upset that half half of LA is Latino and they have less than 5% representation. So that's when you're talking about power. You know, it's about gaining power. Hi. We muted. Oh, you got to press mute. I'm asking you to move. It doesn't come on until the screen comes on. Okay. How are you? So, all right. 
Okay, it's perfect timing though, because I did play the audio. Did you want me to replay the audio so you could hear what this, um, I guess she's a racist, um, LA president, councilwoman, um, Nuri Martinez. She called- Let me hear. Okay, because she called the black kid a monkey. Um, all right. Yeah. Let's go back. So they're discussing a dispute between council members who were at odds last year over the district who's going to represent USC and some park. So this is a clip Martinez recounting a conversation she had with the businessman, Danny. So getting back to Marquise, I told Danny, if you want to cut a deal and- How did this jump? Oh, oh no, it didn't jump. I'm sorry. What was the, how did the dispute come up? I didn't see that part. Clip okay. mm -hmm. So they were having a, so the group was discussing a dispute between council members, Corinne. Oh, I, I got that. USC and experts who would represent USC in the expedition park. Okay. Right. There's nobody there. So it's a big area and nobody hardly lives there. Okay. So getting back to Marquise, I told Danny, if you want to cut a deal and if you want to, if, if you want to make like, the boss moves, I would go after the airport. He goes, I know that idea. I said, come on, please. So go don't take go, it from his friend. Don't go, don't go after him. Leave him alone. Yeah. Go get the airport from his little brother, mm -hmm. that little bitch bonnet. And I, go, what? Black people. I go, I go, what is with the bonnet? What is with bonnet? And I said, bonnet thinks he's black. That guy don't think he's black. I go, he thinks he's black. I go, the same thing. This kid is. He goes, why are they so close? For MLK, for the parade that Herb used to organize, and we need all the council who wanted to join Herb on the float, because he used to do a whole float to be nice. Bonnie would be like, hey, Nuri, are you going to the MLK? Well, Herb invited me, yeah, I'll, I'll go. Okay, I'm bringing whatever the kid's name is. I'm like, it's like the oddest thing. It's like black and brown on this float. And then there's this, this white guy with this little black kid who's misbehaved. Este niño has no, he's, they're not doing as, yeah, no, they're not doing, the kid is bouncing off the effing walls on the floor, practically tipping it over. There's nothing you can do to control him. Parece changuito. And I'm just like, oh my God. That's what she called the monkey. This kid. I'm like, you can't do that. I said no. Well, he seems to be and acting like one out of control, like, bouncing all over the floor, no, about to tip it over. <laughs> it's me and Karen Bass on the floor trying to check this little kid. <laughs> me, Karen Bass, and la esposa de Marquise, Carrie. And we're all looking at each other because we're the three women on the floor. Like, who's going to This kid's going to tip us over. Because yeah. he's literally hanging on the rails. Jeez. Well, you can't let him, let him off because the, the, the spectators will beat his ass. Yeah. yeah. They're raising him like a little yeah. white kid, which I was like, this kid needs a beat down. Like, let me, let me take him around the corner and then I'll bring him back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So then they went so back. To the what did she resign for? She resigned, but that doesn't, but she resigned from being a president. That don't mean she quit. So she probably still a councilwoman, well, but she, she shouldn't. Like, she should stay on there. She just told the truth. Fools acting like a monkey and out of control. We talk about that all the time. Uh, white guy with a kid out of control. This one just happens to be a black kid. I mean, it's a thing that is going on in society. Uh, the parents don't control the children and it gets to be a mess. So what was said wrong? Calling nobody no monkey? I'm like this. If they well, he may be a damn monkey the way he's acting. 
you know, calling a black child monkey or black people monkey, Why? that is offensive. Oh, here they America. need to get over that shit. Bottom line is, as hell, we used to, at least he wasn't talking about the kid's mama. Damn, we'd be talking about somebody's mama. And it ain't like that conversation is any worse than any other one a whole lot of people haven't had. So, I mean, what did they do wrong? All this sensitivity shit. Get rid of it and get down to real issues. Well, okay, so this is the real issue as well, because she was also mocked. Um, it says Martinez also mocked Oxacons, O-A-X-A-C-A-N-S, Oxacons or something, and said that effing, no, she said F that guy. He's with the Blacks while speaking about Los Angeles County District Attorney George Gascon. Um so she called the white little boy a monkey. She was mocking. Was a white kid or a black kid? She called, I mean, she called the black kid. The black kid, I guess he has a white father. Um, and I think he's gay because I think he adopted the black kid, but the kid is black. The father is white. And that's what she was like. They raising him like a white kid and called him. She called the black kid a monkey, the little black kid that was bouncing around on float, a monkey. Now she's also mocking. A Mexican being raised by a gay white for a uh, dad stand in. Okay. All right. All right. And she also mocked um, a Mexican guy. Um, she they said Martinez also mocked a uh, ox cons, old ox cons or something and said, F that guy, he's with the blacks. So this whole redistrict redistricting the map, it says the conversation took place October 21. It focused heavily on council members' frustration with maps that have been proposed by the city's 21 member redistricting commission. Um, so basically there, I think the guys that was in the room with her set her up with that recording. Cause I'm like, who put the recording in there? And then who cares? I mean, she hadn't done anything wrong, but they're saying that you can't, but you can't record conversations in the state of California. That's hey, yeah. I mean, but she hasn't done anything wrong. What's the big bullshit about it? Now, she did apologize. She says... Um, Why the hell she need to apologize? It was candid commentary on a subject that is needing commentary. You got these kids, control them. Nobody said it was because the kid was black. He happens to be black, adopted by a gay white dude. I mean, hell. And because, the kid's out of control. Okay, so, so but she I mean, said... She said, in a moment of intense frustration and anger, I let the situation get the best oh, of me. Oh, she didn't need to explain. She just said he should get the trial under control. But she was frustrated. That's what she, at, right, what she, was she Why does she need to no, 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 no. explain it? Listen, listen. She was frustrated about the redistricting, right? And I guess that child's parent is the one that they're trying to get on board to help them redistrict, I guess, in their favor. So she, yeah, she was just frustrated honestly listening to it i didn't find nothing wrong because we all have those conversation with colleagues about damn you see how bad they damn kid it's a little yeah bad. we have did you now see that little like punk ass fucking. kid over there acting a goddamn fool somebody needs to kick his ass uh damn what you got a little ape came out the zoo out the primate uh cage or something control that little fool but this is my concern, not so much of her remarks, because I didn't, that didn't hurt my feelings or make me feel any kind of way. The same way Kanye remarks were not anti-Semitic. This part here, the group discussed the city's once decade process of redrawing council district boundaries, which was underway at the time, as well as the need to reelect let. Latino council members and ensure that the heavenly Latino districts did not lose economic access, such as USC and the Van Nuez Airport. She also went on to say, Barron's son was born to the conversation, um, blah, 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 because the council members, Price and Marquise, who were at odds last year over whose district will represent USC and uh, Exposition Park once new maps were finalized. Both men are Black and represent parts of South Los Angeles. Um, I'm just trying to go down to the reason why she was upset. Um, 
Well, okay, she got worked up. Yeah, I mean, hell, it's a matter of politics ain't supposed to be about fun and games. People get impacted. It's real. It's just, I mean, the ultimate extension of the political process is war. That's uh, General Clausewitz. Mm -hmm. I think the book is called Von Krieg on war. He was observing uh, what his experiences were about during the Napoleonic Wars and observing the phenomenon of Napoleon in Europe. So, hey, if you can extend on to killing folk behind it, so can you with language. So, okay, so she also so it says, Martina said that the area was in a council district 10, which was Ridley Thomas district. Martinez did know that, that Raman wants a play for K-Town, that's Koreatown, um, but said that would not happen because she didn't want beef with Ridley Thomas. Later in the conversation, a group talked about Koreatown, a largely Latino neighborhood should be handled in redistricting, right? So it's all about this redistricting thing. Um, she said, she also went on to say that the group then questioned whether Chateau Place, a small street in Lafayette Park or in Koreatown. Quote, I see a lot of little short dark people, end quote, Martina said of that section of Koreatown, employing stereotypes long used against the um, Oya Axe ax cans in Mexico and in the United States. She goes to say, I was like, I don't know where these people are from. I don't know what village they come from, they how they got here. Um, yeah, my fourth grade teacher, Mrs. Rodriguez, when I was in Bud Long Avenue Elementary School, used to talk about that, too. And she wasn't exactly nice about it. Mestizos and mulatos and all the rest of it. And she and her husband were Hispania you know, um, yeah, so Blanco yeah. and all of this other mess. So, I mean, you know. I mean, my point is that, so they're basically were just talking about how they want to, how can they redistrict these parts of the city that's going to benefit them to be in power and Latinos having a voice and making sure that- That's what the hell is about, baby. What's the problem? No, that's, that's reality. Right. But it's so funny now that, all of a sudden, this recording comes up two years later. We're in election season. You know, she's resigning. It's messy. You I don't see what the hell she should resign for off of that. There's nothing about that needs to resign. It's just candid comment. And if you a punk ass gang handle it, then fuck you. You know, go get grow up. Not you, I mean them. Mm -hmm. And then look, the kid's a monkey now. What's he supposed to be in 10 years? Punk ass fool? You know, hey. Well, if he is not in control now, just to spoil Brad Punk. They've got enough of them running around in the first place. Somebody should have been talking about their crazy little young asses before they grew up to be big, stupid asses. Now, just a little bit more backlash she did receive. This is from the National Assembly of American Slavery Descendants of Los Angeles. Oh, fuck them. The man resignation of Los Angeles City Council members. So they the need to do something about the situation in what used to be South Central LA and getting that shit together so people have a decent lifestyle to deal with and make it peaceful and deal with their business instead of worrying about crap like this. Well, listen, it's all about political power. Yeah, and they ain't got none. They had it and they let it slip through their hands because they were too much into sitting on leather covered or upholstered sofas and chairs in five-star uh, hotel bars and sipping Chablis and nibbling cheese and crackers and shit instead of getting down and dealing with the people. One more thing before we go into the Biden, and that's going to be it. Kanye West, he was restricted on Twitter and Instagram because he tweeted, 
I'm a bit sleepy tonight, but when I wake up, I'm going, I'm going DEFCON 3 on Jewish people. The funny thing is I actually can't be anti-Semitic because black people are actually Jews. Also, you guys have toyed with me and tried to blackball anyone, whoever opposes your agenda. Now they're, now he was restricted because he says DEFCON 3 on Jewish people when he wakes up, meaning I guess he's just going to expose them. He got restricted on Twitter. He got restricted on Instagram and all these news outlets are writing. So does anybody, any goddamn fool know what DEFCON 3 means? DEFCON 1, 2, 3, and what? Find out what the hell that means before you get to reacting to it. So it's not anything except the euphemism. Right. I mean, hell, this is more of this punk ass sissy shit where nobody can stand anything. Oh, I my feelings like, well, fuck your goddamn feelings. They need to be heard half the damn time if you're that damn sensitive. And he better not apologize. Hell no. Because, and if you want to get into the truth of the matter, if they're all that upset about it, why don't they stop being goddamn hypocrites and funding all this N-word shit that they pay for in the movies and on rap and in music and every other damn thing in hell? Because we don't fight against it. I'm talking about the people he's talking about who exactly. fund this shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because the people he's talking about who's funding all of the negative stereotypes of black people, they ain't their people, so they don't care. They don't need defending their people. No, so, it's their people funding it. Right. But because we they're funding they're they're fun they're funding stere negative stereotypes of black people because they Yes, say <laughs> look at the credits on some of these movies where they freely use the N-word right, or on some of the rap video where they freely use the N-word or the TV programs like P-Valley where they frequently use the word or in incessantly and excessively use the word. But what I'm saying is we, our group, don't fight back against that nonsense because they're not going to fight for us because... We're we need to set Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and all that bunch of fascist up for a damn lawsuit, a class action lawsuit, which they would be very vulnerable to because they impact interstate commerce. And when you impact interstate commerce, you cannot violate the Bill of Rights. And damn it, if they are not violating the Bill of Rights when it comes to Amendment 1 free speech. Speaking. And what is this goddamn bullshit? I sent that to you. This goddamn, look at him. He got his eyes fixed. You're going to call him Brandon. We're going to say, let's go, Brandon. <laughs> let's go, Brandon. Yeah. And everybody Bye. knows what that meant. In case Bye. you don't. Being polite about it, Brandon was a driver at a NASCAR event, and the reporter was interviewing uh, Mr. Brandon, and the crowd was chanting, F Joe Biden, F Joe Biden. So he said, well, I guess that's go, Brandon. So it took off, and that's what it stands for. Look at him. He had to go get his eyes operated on and get the bags lifted. That is pathetic. He says, what are you trying to do? Rely on appearances instead of performance? Hell, he never was that good looking. He looked like a goddamn troll anyway, half the time. You see that shit? The latest one came out on that crap where the British are released. They've heard the tapes that his crackhead son, Hunter, put out where he's crying. Man, why'd you get the gun? Why'd you do that? And the FBI, well, I don't know if the FBI held this so deep off into somebody's ass pockets about it. Uh, the feds, anyway, are investigating oh. Hunter Biden. Uh, no, it's not the FBI. It's, uh, let's see, ATF Wait, well, is investigating Hunter because oh. he bought a gun three days after this conversation that we're talking about when Joe Biden is crying to his son about why did you do that? And he lied about his use of drugs on the form and it's a felony. 
So well, Mr. Vice President is set on it for a number of years. I suppose you would say attorney client, except he's not an attorney right. anywhere. Well, so, I wanna I wanna talk about this yeah. Article. Trans women must register for draft. That's so much. But which one got the dick? So basically, so what's this selective services says, parents, if your son is an only son and the last male in your family to carry the family name, he is still required to register with SSS. Learn yeah, he so, is. In other words, so what this happens person, is that Wait, wait, wait. This person responded to that tweet. My son's a girl now, so we good. No, I ain't. Oh, damn. You and, admit that shit? And then I hope it, that's not also, him. So, so. He puts out there the wait, son's wait. a punk? Listen, so, no, this is just a picture. This person below responded. But Selective Services responded saying, parents, if your son. No, 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 no. Wait, it wasn't that. Well, which one was it? If your parents only son. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if your son. Oh, he is still required to register. And then he also said, for the purpose of SSS, my son will identify as a girl starting with his 18th birthday. birthday. Checkmate fascists. Um, and then the. Oh, God. So the, the administration supports Section 513 registration requirements of office citizens, which further ensures the military selective selective the military services that is fair and just. Um, wait a minute. It was something that the committee agreed, blah, blah, blah. Just because you a punk ass does not mean you can't get shot as meritoriously as anybody else or is lacking merit as lacking in merit as anybody else. You can be cannon fodder too, just like the youth of this country have historically been when the time requires. You can be a sad sack sitting on a trench taking a shit and get blown away, which doesn't make you a hero. It just means you an unlucky son of a bitch, or you can be a real hero. Oh, okay. So the minute the Biden administration requirements. For who must register for selective service in the event that there is a draft includes those persons that identify as transgender but are born male. Almost all male U.S. citizens and male immigrants who are 18 through 25 are required to register with selective services. Quote, U.S. citizens or immigrants who are born male and change their gender to female are still required to register. Individuals who are born female and change their gender to male are not required to register reads the guidance of requirements from the selective service system because the selective service which is interested in people who are going to be put out there for military purposes and who are liable to die it doesn't give a good goddamn and that's appropriate you got a dick you got a dick swinging dicks are liable to get blown away mutilated wounded or survive and become heroes now that this, is the reality. So, so it the, does not make any difference if some fool decides to be spayed or neutered by going to whatever veterinarian service they go to. Legally, because you're a judge. So with that said, with, with that requirement, can that be used in court as far as you no, know. what? Let me translate. It's bullshit journalism. The headline would be Selective Service Confirms Traditional Gender and Sexual Realities. That should have been the headline, not that bullshit you guys. Because what it's saying is, what they're saying there. is, just because you say you are a woman, if you are born with a penis, you are still classified as a man. Oh, I'm some fool with a delusion. I, what the hell does that have to do with reality? Dudes go in there all the time. Back in the 60s, man, I'm crazy, man. I think I'm a bird. No, well, you can fly over this goddamn trench and do aerial reconnaissance. But you go into the now let me, or to the stockade. Let me read this. Yes. Thank you, Mitchell Williams. He said he did nothing for us up here. James Green says happy birthday. Yes, guys, it is still my birthday. If you would like to send me a cash app, 
That's dollar sign Dana with the data or super chat. Matt Shitter says, Dana, CNN told Don Lemon where to get the reparations from live or on air. They hid it from you. Um, Leticia, third eye POV. Good evening, Miss Dana. I get so tired of our people looking for a savior. We need to save ourselves. F a leader, lead yourself. Damn, much love. Thank you so much. And that's not bad. Uh -huh. Matt Shitter. I'm not HB to win. So I told you and you and George went left about who has to do what a few days ago, Steven Crowder said it, call me who's Steven Crowder. I have no idea. The zone says I spent over 20 years in the military, worked as a police officer and insurance agent. Can you give blacks in the U S a billion dollars each? Within a two to five years, we will lose 95% of the money. Uh, you're not going to give a person a billion dollars, but I kind of get your point. I tell you, if, the, if it looks like reparations going, I'm investing in an athletic shoe outlet or two. <laughs> well, if, you get, if you get your reparations check. Um, no, I said if it looks like reparations checks are going to be on the horizon, I am going to get some athletic shoe outlet so I can get the money uh, <laughs> from Rand the people that get the checks. Randall <laughs> Wim, but you know, Randall Wim says, keep up the good work, Dana. Thank you so much. So yeah, that's basically my show tonight. Um, oh man. But I, yeah, cause I want you to come in and comment on the councilwoman and of course, Joe Biden. Um, I did, didn't I? Get yeah, and then you also commented on Kanye because that was like the meat of the show. Remember, I brought up the woman. Maybe you want to comment on this. The one I sent you that article yesterday um, with the woman saying that black men are toxic. Um, yeah, goddamn fool. She like to eat twat, don't like dick. So anyway, what else is new? And she does not, she needs to be spayed to neutered. So she doesn't have any boys and screw their heads up. Right. Uh, she wrote an opinion piece for the Washington Post, Kanye West, Hershey Walker, and a politician. And look, 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 I don't care if Herschel Walker is brain dead. It is better to get him in the U.S. Senate than that idiot opponent of his who is going to do nothing but put policies in place that are anti-family that will produce more boys like Herschel Walker's, uh, you want to call him son? I don't know what the hell he is. He needed to get some bass in his voice when he was talking. Listen, and this is what I'm saying, that his son now, last week, put out that Instagram video. I heard it. Right. We heard and we talked about it condemning his father saying he wasn't there. But check this out. This is from some years ago. I think he was just starting college or something. He came out as gay on the cheerleader and there go Herschel Walker supporting his son. And I wanted to play this video clip. It is now a great pleasure to announce the winner of the 1982 Ivan Memorial Trophy from the University of Georgia. Herschel Walker. That was Herschel Walker winning the Heisman Trophy. You're leading, uh, but he quickly came around when he saw what the sport is all about. But not everyone has been so supportive. Hold it! When you see the lifts, Five, the twists, six, seven, and the mind-boggling flips, let's go, let's go, stand up. There's let's no go. question here, these kids are athletes. But that's not what everyone thinks when they hear the word cheerleader. Good. I thought like cheering at a game and he's no, no, no competitive cheer. And I'm like, what? Like, what is that? Herschel Walker is an NFL legend, but his teenage son Christian decided last year that instead of picking up a football, let's go, Christian, let's go. He wanted to fly. Let's go. Let's 
it feels like you're flying, but then you land and you just want to do it again, and that's what really no, made me to cheerleading. You never huh, felt like huh, I'm gonna disappoint huh. my dad if I don't. You know, they've always had male football. cheerleaders, no, but usually they had the slacks so on and they threw the girls up in the air. At first, Walker was baffled. In Dallas, he played on a team with the most famous cheerleaders in the world. Christian was talking about coming. Let me talk. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I was obsessed with the Dallas Cowgirl cheerleaders. I wanted to be one so, so, so bad. Oh, yeah. But I mean, you I know, now it. they probably got some little boy uniform. shaking his booty over there. Like, take your booties to the pole type on, like, you know, that kind. And by the and way, on that commercial, entirely different. we checked it out. Most third of them were boys anyway. They weren't even girls. There's oh no people turning flips and all this stuff, dance and all this, and uh, I came out to see it. Oh, come on, come on. He's trying to support but, the little punk. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, wait, I just want to- What was that like for you? It was almost shocking, because all my friends are- so and yeah, 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 yeah. But I want to just, in that video, his son was saying how supportive his father was. His father, yeah, was I know. He he got him some rough trade or something. Is that what they call it? And he got toint out. So he decided he wanted to get his dick cut off. Now I guess he's gonna be one of those he she it things, switching the itch it with a contrived he, program. Listen, program. Herschel Walker, Herschel Walker came to every cheerleading event at the football yeah, game. So what's he going to do? Wear some tight shorts or a skirt was now? There. Right. So I'm saying like, so what are you doing now trying to disparage this man? Please go vote for her. Oh, shoes. he wants to go get spayed or neutered. He needs, he's looking for a vet. <laughs> a veterinarian. So he can get neutered, turned oh, into well, a unit cleaned or up something. That cleaned up that acne, acne now honey he is mm, yeah he paired <laughs> <laughs> and i'm not didn't... getting on him because he's gay he wants to go that other way and uh what is it fix himself i don't new? know i don't i don't i don't he didn't say that that's a snip, didn't snip. Say that. that's he didn't say that but the snip, point snip. Is, the point is you lying on your father. You said he wasn't there, but here he goes supporting you. You are a grown man. Stop blaming your parents. When you are 18, you need to stop blaming your parents. Start your own life. Oh, so, he a punk. That's why he blaming your mother daddy stayed in the damn with way. that man for 20 years. She had you. Wait a minute. Did daddy help bend you over and spread your butt cheeks? Boy. Damn. You did Is that. Back seat of a car. You gonna write me in your will. You gonna write me in your will. I'm sorry. You gonna write me in your will, cause if, if I don't work for nobody, but still, somebody look at this part. Don't want to hire me. That's all right. Cause you man, must... they have some nerve. I mean, what the hell happened to personal like responsibility and accountability? Right. If the boy want to do it, that's his doing. It ain't his daddy's fault. Nobody told him to get Twink out. That it ain't daddy's fault. He ain't got no bass in his voice. I'm not going to bring this up because I'm going to close out the show now. But Thursday show, I want us to talk about slavery supposed to be on some ballots in certain states. But we, we could say that for what slavery you're talking about as in 13th Amendment, there shall be no slavery nor involuntary servitude except upon due process of law as a punishment for a criminal offense. That's always been the case. Guess what, you goddamn fool? If you got your ass locked up and convicted, you are a damn slave because you've got your liberty restricted or stripped from you because you did something wrong. And don't punk out talking about it. You got done wrong because 84 to 87% of your ass is confessed and 97 plus percent of you could plead guilty. Go to trial, God damn it. Then Tennessee. talk shit and become one of that little over 2% off in the penitentiaries who got convicted by a jury. Then you can talk. I'll listen to them. The rest of them, did you cop out? Well, Tennessee. are you mental retarded or something? Or were you of diminished capacity? No. Well, you knew what you were doing. 
Tennessee Constitutional Amendment 3 removes slavery as punishment for crime from Constitution Amendment in 2022. Oh, so, bullshit. That ain't going to, that's my state. That's going nowhere in hell because it won't match the U.S. Constitution. So you're going to vote now. You in other vote? words, you want to oppose in other words, the language? In other words, what the goddamn problem is, is there is not anything in the Tennessee criminal laws that says you can be enslaved as a punishment for a criminal offense. That's some grandstanding by some ignorant either backwoods folk or stuck down in the hood folk that don't know shit about what they're talking about. So you're going to oppose amending the state constitution to remove it doesn't have shit in there to say about it. Involuntary servitude as criminal. It punishment. doesn't have it in the Tennessee laws about a punishment for a criminal offense. It's in the, the, 13th yeah, the 13th Amendment says the 13th, yeah, Amendment. the 13th Amendment says you can. It doesn't say you have to. So Is there's there nothing way? in the Tennessee law that deals with it. But what it does do, God damn it is for all of these goddamn filthy highways and roadways, dirty ass parking lots, vacant lots filled with trash. Now the judges can't order a son of a bitch on community service to go out and clean the goddamn thing up. Stupid assholes. So do you think this is a way for people, for these officials to try and change the amendment? Hell no, that is grandstanding. Community service is labor, involuntary labor, if you have to do it. So God damn it, I guess the thing of it is, is send the son of a bitches to jail rather than having them do community service. Cause involuntary labor is guess what? A version in some kind of ways of slavery. So now these stupid shits, have taken away community service. That's what the hell these stupid fools are doing. Jack at the goddamn it, Tennessee in 1988 had probably the most progressive, reasonable, and rational and coherent criminal laws in the entire United States of America. Why? Because most of Tennessee's criminal law was not codified up until 1988. It was common law. So in 1988, they issued a code. It was very coherent, clear, and it was easy to follow. And it had some specific, rational, reasonable outcomes. And in these ignorant son of a bitches from backwoods nowhere, uh, down in the hood nowhere, decided they wanted to get cute. So over the intervening 34 years, they have effed it up. And now this is one more. All right. So... Let me... All that look, see, I know what a judge can do because hell, I did it. All right, it's a condition of probation. You will do 250, 500 hours, 1,000 hours, 1,200 hours of community service in lieu of you doing five years. So, what we're going to do is the following. So, now you can't do that shit because you can't even clean up your own damn community. So, guess what the hell do they want done? And they have a raging crime problem here in the state of Tennessee. Memphis is now number one in the homicide rate in the entire country. Uh, entire country. It has the highest rate of violent crime in the country. So what the hell are you supposed to do? It's got a lot of moderate, marginal criminality that needs to be adjusted. So now you can't do a goddamn thing. Well. Masculinity clothing guys. Go to www.masculinity clothing. Masculinity clothing. An online clothing store that isn't just about the clothes. It's about the message and it's about the man. Masculinity clothes and accessories are symbolic, sending a message that it's time for a wardrobe change, acknowledging the importance of manhood, fatherhood, brotherhood, concepts that strengthen the family unit, our communities, and America. Join us as we celebrate men in our mission to reintroduce the dignity of manhood in a healthy, positive manner. Masculinity Clothing. www.masculinityclothing.com Go to www.masculinityclothing.com and buy you some masculinity clothing products. Right. And while you're 
online buying masculinity products, then go to JJB. Yeah, there you go. JJBBQ.com. JJBBQ.com. Get yourself some. Yes. A manly sauce. <laughs> that sauce good as hell. Good, good, good. Okay, when is the other products coming out? I want the chicken links, the seasoning spicing, the spicy barbecue. The, the chicken links come uh, mild and hot and smoked and raw. They're supposed to be out, what is this, October this month. We sold uh, several, half a thousand, more than half a thousand pallets of sauce to be on the shelves to various retail establishments in California. We're moving to Tennessee on that too. Oh, but is it going to be sold on the website? Yeah, it's supposed to be up. Also powder stew. When is, and it's going to be up by the end of this month? supposedly now the other thing too about the chicken links uh guess what the sister that runs the operation runs the only usda certified black meat packing plant in california mm -hmm. well listen um wait a minute what is this uh, Excuse me, but I'm so sick and tired of ignoramuses tampering with the law that they don't understand, trying to grandstand crap and throw the baby out with the bathwater. That's why I went off on this shit. No, it's no problem. I know what it means. This is just absolutely absurd. What are you supposed to do for somebody who screws up? You can send them to jail. You can make them do community service, but they just went out and abolished community service because what the hell is it? I don't want to do that. Well, then take your ass to jail because you're going to do something for fucking up. Well, thank you, Judge, for joining me. So today. they can sit their ass up in jail now instead of doing any community service. Oh, thank you to... Oh, no, I've, I read all this. 90 okay. seconds. Oh, let me shut down the phone lines. Okay. Anything you want to say in conclusion? Thank you so much for hopping on. I know it was last minute. Well, I couldn't get a signal. I would have been on a lot earlier. It's like I sent you a picture, a screenshot of my cell phone, which now has two bars. It just flashed one. I was getting nothing. This screwed up place around here is so effed up when it comes to that. And the damn city administration isn't doing a damn thing to encourage the people getting signals for their Wi-Fi, cell phones, or anything else. The utilities are decrepit yeah, Mondays and don't a, work. Oh, you know why, too? Everyone's home because it's Columbus Day slash Indigenous Day. I want to ask you about that real quick. And I put up a poll. Are you going to the hashtag FBA pull up in D.C. rally? 74% said no, 26% said yes, 211 people voted. Um, I said, I'm not going, but I don't do rallies or protests. I, honey, I, I put my time in. I used to march and all that stuff. I don't do it anymore. I do it in other ways. So, um, but yeah, I think you guys should go, especially young people. Go out there, get, your, get, get the experience, shit. Put your feet to the pavement. All young people need to go down to DC November the 5th. Today is Indigenous Day, Judge. Anything you want to say about Indigenous Day? My grandmother was a Choctaw, so okay, fine. Uh, she used to have a saying that I think Black folk need to deal with. She used to say, you colored people are always getting mad about something. Said, my people would nail a scalp to the lodgepole when we got mad. You need to understand what that means. Well, it's in, they call it Indigenous People Day because this used to be Columbus Day and a lot of people still celebrate Columbus Day today. So what do you prefer? Do you prefer Columbus Day, Indigenous Day, or do it even matter to you? The hell do I want to celebrate an Italian day for, for being a mercenary on hire to the Spanish crown, Ferdinand and Isabella, 
in trying to subjugate the so-called new world, which wasn't a new world because some of my ancestors settled it long, long, long ago. So what the hell am I supposed to be celebrating that for? More power to him as a navigator and for figuring out what the ancients had known all along. The world is a globe. It ain't flat. You ain't falling off of it if you go too far. Okay. Damn, you can look up at the moon's shadow and see that any uh, month, certain times of the month. Right. Wow. So F Columbus Day and yay for Indigenous People Day. All right, Judge. Thank you for hopping on. I'll see you Thursday, right? I'm sorry to get angry. It's just, I'm, it's like, God damn. We spoke, you know. I've seen it when people were enlightened as a general thing. And now it's getting back so many ill-informed ignoramuses with all of these. A lot of people are just not educated and a lot of people are more followers than leaders and leading themselves and you know, just well, that bothers me that the educational quotient is so much less now than it was half century it's, it's ago. Not that so, is embarrassing. It's, it's it's not so much the school education, but parents are not educating their children properly because they're not educated. I've been I've over the last fifty years. I've been the elementary, junior high, or mid uh, schools, uh, middle schools. And high schools over and over again, they are not teaching what they used to. And it's not done vigorously. And a lot of them have ignorantly banished homework, for goodness sakes. Like, you're, throughout your life, you're just going to go la di da you know, you never have anything to do outside work. Well, I guess you will be just a salaried employee working on a production line and you'll do nothing to better yourself so you can move up. Is it apologetic or apologetic? Anti-apologetic or anti-apologetic? Anti-apologetic. A-P-O-L-O-G-E-T-I-C. Yeah. Okay. And I had anti wrong. Nobody didn't let me know, but I just corrected it. All right. That's it. Um, Thursday. And I said I wanted to do the show a little bit early on Thursday. Thank you, Judge coming on thank you now you got me hostile again oh. one more example of ignorance well which ignorance which ignorance tonight was it a the whole woman bunch saying toxic it. black men no Biden. toxic black man that latino uh city oh, council right, woman yeah. resigning because of bullshit this thing from the tennessee legislative body which is bullshit Again, oh wow! Should we elaborate more on the Tennessee slave thing? Because it's in other states on Thursday. You know, they don't understand because they're so goddamn ignorant, and they didn't study this matter in the fifth grade, which is when they should have been exposed to it. Now, as I said. Community service is always a better alternative for nonviolent offenders than locking them up. But what's going on now is this kind of stuff. I've looked at it and I said, you know, they effectively knock community service out the box. Not that that's not abused, but oftentimes it's very helpful you screw your neighborhood up you rob well you burglarize somebody you sell poison to somebody you screw up and make the quality of life less for somebody then you can give back there are things that need to be cleaned up things that need to be put in order and now of course since most of those things involve labor you can't do it so i guess we need to just start sending them to jail because I'll be damned if most folk need to accept certain categories of first offenders need to be patted on the hand. They're there. 
You need to be able to come right out of jail so no bonds anymore are needed. You can be charged with all kinds of offenses and keep doing it, but we'll let you out. No ROR's where somebody checks you out. Just, I don't care. Just let you go. Now, you get convicted or you cop out. Oh, fine. We can't make you do anything as an alternative to going to jail. So let's have you sit in a goddamn jail and vegetate. And with that, I'm going to say good night. Thank you guys for tuning okay. in. And I will see you guys tomorrow at 6 p.m. Dinner with the data. You want to see the judge on Thursday because I don't want to keep making him upset um, until Thursday. So thank you. Good night. Bye. Mm -hmm. All right. I ended the show. <laughs>